Sixty-three years ago yesterday, a young soldier from Hudson Falls helped liberate inmates of a Nazi concentration camp. He was a tank commander fighting in Germany. A North Country history teacher and his students are documenting the soldier's story. In the process, they've brought together Holocaust survivors from around the world. Matt Roselle and his students interview veterans and archive their stories on the Hudson Falls High School website. They call it the World War II Living History Project. In 2001, Roselle interviewed Carol Walsh, a tank commander during the war. I did a two-hour interview with him. He talked about driving a tank across Europe through the Battle of the Bulge, fighting for 18 hours a day, all kinds of really interesting stories. And we got to the tail end of the interview, and his daughter said, Dad, did you tell Mr. Roselle about the train? The Nazis were moving thousands of people from the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp to hide them from Allied forces. Roselle says between 5 and 7,000 Jews were put on three trains bound for another camp in Nazi-controlled Czechoslovakia. One reached its destination, its passengers murdered. Another train was liberated by the Soviets. A third train was found by U.S. troops, including that young soldier from Hudson Falls. On this one train in our story, Carol Walsh, with his crew, were ordered to go investigate this train stopped by the side of the tracks, and it was filled with these Jewish refugees. Basically, they liberated the train. Another soldier had a camera and began taking shots of the now liberated Jews. Roselle tracked the photographer down in California and acquired many of the pictures. He and his students posted some on the class website. So they went on the Internet and they sat there for four years. We don't get a lot of web traffic. It's not really a high-profile site. But then all of a sudden, out of the blue, I got an email from Australia, and it was a woman who had been a seven-year-old girl on the train. When she opened up this website, she actually saw photographs of the day of her liberation. Word of these photos and the class's history project spread among survivors. This led to two organized reunions of the train survivors and the U.S. soldiers who liberated them. One event in Hudson Falls gave students the chance to spend some time with these people. Melissa is a sophomore in Roselle's class. She says she was amazed at the survivors' ability to forge new lives after the war. I think it's great just that they can, like, come back from that and still be able to live their life after seeing all that kind of, like, devastation and not just, like, falling into a depression or just, like, being able to lose their family and still find some kind of goodness in this world and being able to even forgive the people who did it to them. Emily is another student working on the History Project. It really makes you think about how you treat other people, and it really changed my life. I think about everything I do or say to people before I say it, because you never know what someone went through like or is going through. And just because someone believes something that you don't or doesn't believe something you do doesn't mean that you have to be that harsh to them. As the teacher who started this project, Roselle says it's been very rewarding. It's a good feeling to know that you've done something meaningful. It's um, good to know that you're making some kind of a difference in somebody's life. Roselle says to date, the World War II Living History Project has reunited 24 survivors of the Nazi train liberated by U.S. soldiers. You can find a link to the World War II Living History Project website at ncpr.org.